Hello viewers. In this session, we will discuss how the terrain will affect the microwave communication. Okay, let's start with the simple example. For example, in this um, in this site A to site B, there will be a direct signal. The blue one is the direct signal. And then the reflected signal also is there. The green one and the red one are the reflected signal. In the receiving end, both the direct signal and the reflected signal will reach the destination antenna. If both the direct signal and the reflected signal are in phase, then the signal will be added up. You will get more signal power at the receiving end. If both are in the uh, out of phase or anti phase, then the signal will be cancelled. So theoretically, the receiving antenna will not get any signal from the transmitting antenna. Okay. So before going to the next topic, we will discuss about the reflection coefficient. So what is reflection coefficient? Reflection coefficient is nothing but how much energy is reflected from that particular surface. That is called as reflection coefficient. The value of reflection coefficients ranges from 0 to 1. Again, it is dependent upon the material or surface. You can exactly calculate the reflection coefficient uh, in a microwave link. So, if two antennas are in same height, then reflection coefficient will be exactly in the middle of the path, microwave link path. Okay, let's see how the reflection coefficient varies for different surfaces. For example, uh, in the reflection coefficient is almost zero when it is uh, when the terrain is rough or mountain area. It means all the energy is are uh, safely reaching to the transmitting receiving antenna. But in this case of water body, if the reflection coefficient is in a sea or in a lake, then almost all the energy is reflected. All the energy is get wasted here. So that's the point about reflection coefficient. Okay, then we will move on to Fresnel zone. We often heard about this word Fresnel zone. So basically, uh, we have studied in uh, earlier sessions that when we have a direct line of sight between site A and site B, then we can establish a microwave link. That is what we have learned so far. But in after this slide, we have to consider one uh, one thing: the micro uh, around the microwave beam, it there will be a zone. Uh, in uh, practically, there will be multiple zones are there. So all the obstructions should not be entered into this zones. So you should get rid of all these obstructions from this zones, at least in the first Fresnel zone. There will be a multiple zones starting from the first Fresnel zone, second Fresnel zone and third Fresnel zone and so on. Okay, let's de uh, define it now. Okay, for example, site A and site B is there. There is a direct link, the direct signal goes to the receiver and the another signal is gets reflected in this surface and goes goes to the receiving end. Okay, there are two conditions. If the reflected signal is, uh, signal's path length is more than the half wavelength of this direct signal, then that is called as the first Fresnel zone boundary. Or if the phase shift, if a phase shift of 180 degree occurs at the reflection point, then this is called then this defines the first fresnel zone boundary okay we in the first condition we have saw that uh, the wavelength is uh, wavelength is little longer than the direct signal so how much uh, it is actually it is in the range of millimeter to centimeter okay so first fresnel zone is defined here and the second fresnel zone the orange one is defined here Okay, so the Fresnel zone's formula is uh, uh, is given here, and the Fresnel zone is depends mainly on frequency, and then uh, then the distance. Okay, the, because of these two factors, the Fresnel zones gets affected. Uh, how it is affected? Either the Fresnel zone will be shrinken or it will be widened. If it is shrinken, uh, then uh, uh, you, uh, then you have safer uh, distance from the obstacles. If it is wider Fresnel zone, then uh, there is a possibility that a lot of obstructions will enter into the first Fresnel zone. Okay, that's it. Uh, um, okay, one more thing. Uh, if you look at the formula, if the value of F and D is increases, the Fresnel zone radius will be decreases. If it, uh, if it is decreases and the Fresnel zone uh, radius will be increases. So. Okay, it, if you look at the formula, then it behaves like that. Okay. 
So what is D1 and D2? D1 is uh, the distance from the first uh, reflection point to the transmitting antenna and the D2 is the distance between the reflection point to the receiving antenna. Okay. Then we will move on to diffract diffraction. So how this diffraction works? So the diffraction is a characteristics of an electromagnetic wave. When it travels past through an obstacle or a medium, then with a grazing incident, then some of the energy get dispersed. Okay, for example, here knife edge obstacle is there. Here a smooth surface obstacle is here. So microwave beam enters uh, here and part of the energy is dispersed. This area is called as a shadow energy, shadow loss. Now, this, is, this area is called as a shadow loss. Okay, the loss depends upon two factors. One is the angle of incidence at which the electromagnetic wave touches the obstacle or grazing over the obstacle. That is, uh, that is one factor. And the second factor is uh, the sharpness of this knife edge case. And here it is smoothness of the surface. Depends upon these two factors, the, the diffraction coefficients, uh, the diffraction values will change. Okay, so in real world, uh, how the diffraction case work? For example, this is a knife edge diffraction, direct signal, and gets reflected back, and then it is called a knife edge. At the edge of edge of the building, it gets diffracted. So this is, will be the shadow losses. And the other case of this is the smooth edge diffraction, a direct signal, and this is the grazing over this um, um, a smooth surface surface. Now. Okay, this is the shadow loss. Okay, so so finally, in summary, what we have, what we are going to learn is there is a two different paths. Path A to path B, the microwave beam travels in a different way, and in from path B to uh, for sorry side B to side A, the microwave travels in a different way. This is a microwave travel from side A to side B. Uh, see, this obstacle was not touched by this microwave beam, but here side B to side A path touches these obstacles. So always remember that path A to B is different from path side B to A. I'm sorry, it is not path, it is side. Thank you all.